How's it going, guys? So this is a very high-yield pediatrics question for 2CK. If you're studying for step one, still very much worth your time to know this because your score will matter on 2CK, all right? So before we get into the question, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find us on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Our links are down below. Now, starting the actual question here. Two-week-old newborn brought to the physician 10-day history of increasingly yellow eyes and skin. She was born to a 22-year-old woman, G2P2. Pregnancy and delivery were uncomplicated. She's exclusively breastfed, although is having difficulty attaching to the breast during feeds. Total bilirubin, 15 milligrams per deciliter. The direct component is 12 milligrams per deciliter. Questions merely asking which of the following is the most likely diagnosis. So let's walk through our answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Physiologic jaundice, wrong fucking answer. Now look. I talk about cutting to the chase and not wasting your time. Unfortunately, okay, it is annoying, all right? You do need to know the five criteria for pathologic jaundice when studying for peds for 2CK, all right? There are some things that seem a bit nitpicky, but they are important. So I'm going to say the five things. If this is the first time you're hearing it, you say, okay, it's going over my head right now. That's too fast. That's fine. You can just replay this part of the video if you want. I don't want to spend all day on it. But if you have any one of the following five that are positive, our jaundice is considered abnormal, pathologic jaundice. Physiologic jaundice is if none of the following five things I'm about to say are positive, okay? It can sometimes be physiologic slash normal to have jaundice in a neonate. So your five criteria for pathologic jaundice, number one, any jaundice on the first day of life, period. Doesn't matter the cause, okay? Any jaundice in the first 24 hours of life, that's pathologic. That's number one. Number two, any jaundice present after one week if term or two weeks if preterm, pathologic, all right? Number three, Total bilirubin greater than 15 milligrams per deciliter, pathologic, so 15 or greater. Number four, and this is sort of a difficult one, direct bilirubin greater than 10% of total bilirubin, even if total is under 15, okay? And number five, a rate of change of increase of total bilirubin greater than 0.5 milligrams per deciliter per hour, all right? Now, as I just fucking said, that is going to be over a lot of your heads if that's the first time you're hearing it. But you do need to know those five points when studying for peds for 2CK, all right? Especially if you want that top score. If you don't have any of those five things, it's physiologic. So here we have a, we can just see right away, uh, total bilirubin is 15 milligrams per deciliter. So that right away is pathologic, all right? So we know physiologic jaundice is the wrong answer. And she's two weeks, she's two weeks old. Uh, and she was presumably born at term. We don't mention preterm delivery here. So we said jaundice present after one week of term or two weeks of preterm, that's also pathologic. So we're dealing with a pathologic picture here, okay? Physiologic jaundice, wrong fucking answer. So Krigler nausea, a, dis a distractor, it's our wrong answer. Uh, a couple points. Number one, this would theoretically be the answer if we had a an extremely high unconjugated or indirect bilirubin in the context of an elevated total. So if they gave you, let's say, total bilirubin 20, and it's all indirect, all unconjugated, you could think of krigler nausea as the answer, which is deficiency of UDP glucuronosal transferase at the liver, which is your uptake enzyme for bilirubin, okay? I've actually, truthfully, never seen krigler nausea on any NBME material for 2CK. This is a highly overrated uh, diagnosis in resources. Okay, you see it around. Same thing, by the way, tangentially. I don't want to get off topic with Dubin Johnson and rotor syndromes. Like they just don't exist on NBME material. I've never fucking seen them. Seen them. Okay. Um, breast milk jaundice and breastfeeding jaundice also wrong answers here. Okay. Now these are very weird. So breast milk jaundice. Apparently, breast milk contains an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase, which can unconjugate bilirubin in the small bowel and increase enterohepatic circulation of it, causing jaundice, all right? And the treatment here is often phototherapy. Sometimes, you know, if you read on the, in, on the internet slash the literature, they can say stop breastfeeding for 24 hours. Uh, but in general, phototherapy is the answer. It's not that you need to obsess over the treatment. It's just you should be aware breast milk contains beta-glucuronidase and it can increase enteropatic circulation, cause jaundice. Just be aware of that as a possibility. Breastfeeding jaundice, 
it's a wrong answer, but it's a, it's a distractor here. Say so it's like, oh wow, difficulty attaching to the breast. I've seen that on a two CK Pete's question. They said that in a question, and breastfeeding jaundice was the wrong answer. They actually wanted physiologic jaundice in that in that particular question because the five criteria, none of them were met, as I discussed earlier. So breastfeeding jaundice, if the neonate is not feeding adequately, okay, that also can cause increased enterohepatic circulation of bilirubin, all right? We just said breast milk contains beta-glucuronidase and can cause increased enterohepatic circulation. But also, confusingly, if the neonate is not feeding adequately, that can also increase enterohepatic circulation. It's called breastfeeding jaundice, and the treatment is supplement with formula, okay? Biliary atresia is our correct answer. I said this is exceedingly high yield. You need to know that if you have a neonate who has a very high direct bilirubin, that that's going to be uh, biliary atresia till proven otherwise. Now, we said uh, direct bilirubin greater than 10% of total. So here, I mean, we have a total bilirubin. Not only is this pathologic at 15, uh, but we shouldn't have a direct component greater than 1.5 in theory, okay? So we have a very high direct bilirubin here. This is biliary atresia, very, very high yield for PEDS 2CK. You'll see this on the assessments quite frequently, all right? So as I told you before, Krigler nausea doesn't fucking exist for PEDS. I've never seen it on any NBME, and any NBME assessment uh, till this point, but biliary atresia, you'll see this all over the place, okay? So that's your take home, a high direct bilirubin in a neonate, Answer is biliary atresia till proven otherwise. They're going to want liver biopsy to diagnose. And there are uh, surgical interventions uh, that can be done. Um, I haven't seen uh, liver transplant as an answer on the step, but um, they want liver biopsy to diagnose, okay? You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.